Good morning, Transforming Faith. Welcome to our Cyber Sanctuary. You know what time it is, it's time to worship. And there is no better way than to start your day by singing praises to the Lord. Is this your first time with us? If so, check the link uh, in the chat for a way to stay connected with us so you can stay up to date on all things TFCC. I don't know about you guys, but I've noticed that every single message that we've received has been exactly what we needed to navigate through this transitional period. And I guarantee today it's going to be no different. So right where you are, make sure that you hit that like button, share this broadcast, comment with us. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to our YouTube channel. So let's take a minute to prepare our hearts and minds and get ready for the word that's going for it because I guarantee you it's going to be life-changing. Again, good morning, welcome, and let's get started. Good morning, good morning. Good morning again to my Transforming Faith Christian Center family, to my TLCC E-Church family, to my friends and family all around the world. I say good morning. good morning. Arise and shine for the glory of the Lord has come. This means you got to make a decision to arise. You got to decide to get up. I don't care what's trying to hold you down. The Lord is saying arise and shine. I don't care how dark the situation may be. The Lord is saying arise and shine because this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. In thy presence is the fullness of joy and at thy right hand are pleasures forevermore. The strong hand of the Lord, ladies and gentlemen, even though it may feel like you're on the left side, the place of obscurity, God is saying you're still at the strong side because you are in my heart. Yeah. Do you trust me? To everybody that's under the sound of my voice, I'm kind of excited. Let me pause because I'm already starting to feel it. I'm kind of excited because the Lord is speaking continually. And I'm okay with a hard word because it's going to make me express big faith. Are you okay with a hard word? I hope so because he said some hard again. Right where you are, hit the share button. Share with your followers on Instagram. Share with your followers on Twitter. Share with your followers on TikTok. Give them an opportunity to come in and get on the rhythm of the spirit. Get out your Bibles. Get out your phones. We're going to start our reading. Oh, we're going to play in the Bible a little bit. But God is speaking. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name. Thank you for your spoken word. Thank you for your written word. So we thank you that it is written so it can be spoken. And we thank you that it is spoken so it can be written. So, Father, what you speak, we give you the right to convict us to write it on our hearts. Write it in our physical books so that what we are writing will be actually the same thing that we are writing in the canvas on our hearts so we can have conviction to cooperate and be obedient to what you say. Holy Spirit, one more time, we trust you. And we ask you to come. We ask you to teach. We ask you to reach. We ask you to unite us. We ask you to get us on the same rhythm so that reconstruction, realignment, repositioning, and restoration can begin. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. One more time, hit the share button, ladies and gentlemen. Share with your followers on Instagram. Share with your followers on Facebook. Share with your followers on TikTok. Give them an opportunity to come in to get on the rhythm of what God is saying. Let's go to the book of Numbers, the 14th chapter, starting at verse 1 and verse 5. I've preached this before, and this is where we are. So God just spoke to me and said, go right back to where you are, and I'm going to give you a word. Amen. Numbers, the 14th chapter, starting at verse 1, and I think I'm going to stop at verse 4. And the word of the Lord reads, 
Message Bible. The whole community was in an uproar. <laughs> the whole community was in an uproar. I ain't right it. This is what your Bible say. The whole community was in an uproar. Wailing was going on all night long. Yeah. Weeping may endure overnight, yes, sir. but joy cometh in the morning. Yes. Wailing was going on all night. This means that was some discomfort. My God. This means this was some uncertainty. Yes. This means that we were in a place where we were undecided and we did not know what God was doing or what God was about to do. Verse 2 says, all the people of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron. In other words, we wailing and we start coming against leaders. The entire community was in on it. I ain't right it. No. <laughs> the entire community was in on it. And this is what they said. Why didn't we just die in Egypt? Come on. Why didn't we just die in the wilderness? Why has God brought us into this country to kill us? Our wives and children are about to become plunder. Why don't we just head back to Egypt right now? Soon, they was all saying to one another, let's pick a leader and let's go back into Egypt. And this is what God said to me. I want to help you, but you may have a problem with how I choose to help you. I want to help you, but you may have a problem with how I choose, how I want to help you. In my sovereignty, you might have a problem with what I do, who I choose, where I choose. This is a word, sir. Come on. Let's step back. The tension already in the room. TFCC, TFCCE church, friends and family all around the world, the word is still fresh in my heart. I'm thoroughly convinced and I'm fully persuaded that this season of frustration, yes. it's coming to an end. Yes, sir. This season of confusion, it is coming to an end. This season of stagnation, it is coming to an end. And this season of separation, it is coming to an end. Don't forget, we know that the season is starting to come to an end. When God gives us a hard word, mm -hmm. because it demands us to express big faith. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When God speaks, you and I must have a committed persuasion and an unbreakable confidence that God's word is going to work if we work it. Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, that's big faith. Yes, sir. Yes. When God speaks, we must gain a heavenly perspective in the midst of earthly pressure. Why? Because if we can see what heaven sees, then we can stand on what heaven is saying. Yes. And that, ladies and gentlemen, that is big faith. Yes, yes, yes. Whenever God speaks, we must gain a conviction that will make us keep on pressing even in earthly situations are not perfect. Yes, Ladies and gentlemen, that is big faith. Yes, is. Whenever God speaks, we must see the picture in our head until we gain the reality in our hand. TFCC, that is big faith. And we all know that big faith 
produces big favor. Yeah. But the Lord said to me that I want to help you, but you might have a problem with how I choose to help you. So watch this. If we're going to express big faith, sometimes we need God's big help. This is why God says, I want to help you. Yeah. But you might not like, <laughs> you might not like who I choose to help you. Uh -huh. You might not like the way I help you. It's still your decision whether you allow me to help you or not. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah no, not me, Pastor James. If God want to help me, let him help me. Yep, I, I, I said the same thing. Whatever God want to do, let him do it. Yep, it sounds good. Until you find yourself in the midst of a storm, yeah, 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 yeah. till you find yourself in the midst of tragedy, till you find yourself in the midst of crisis, it sounds good, ladies and gentlemen. Why? It sounds good because we can say we ready to trust God. Yeah. First of the year when the Lord said, it's only up from here. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. It sounded good. My God. Are you with me? But I assumed <laughs> that supernatural help was coming right then. Right. I assumed it was going to happen immediately instead of someone blessing us with finances supernaturally immediately. No, the school went, I mean, the school went on and bought the building yeah, yeah, yeah. and we had to be displaced. And when we got displaced, now we had to be waiting on God to replace us again. And God decided to do it in his time. My God. Are you with me? Yeah, that's why, that's why I'm saying he wants to help us, but we might not like the way he chooses to help us. Why is that? Because in the kingdom, the way up is down. Are you with me? Are you with me? In the kingdom, ladies and gentlemen, the way up is down because he said in Isaiah 55 and 8, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways, said the Lord. Yeah, heaven's ways are always opposite of the world's ways. So watch this. The way you live in heaven is you die. The way you get promoted is you humble yourself. Are you sure you want God to help you in the way that he wants to help you? He says, I want to, but it's your choice to allow me to help you. Yeah. Are you with me? So, so, so watch this. So if you have a problem, this is what God's saying. Here we go. If you have a problem with how God chooses to help you, if you so if you have a problem with how I choose to help you, that may cause you to reject the way I want to help you. Wow. Or it may cause you to reject who I decide to send to you. Wow. Or it may cause you to reject where the help is. Uh -huh. Are you with me? It reminds me of somebody in the Bible, a, 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 a general of the Bible, his name was Naaman. Yeah. And Naaman had a king that was above him, but Naaman had the anointing on him, right? He was the second in command. He wasn't the first. Yeah. The anointing was on the second man, not the number one man. Wow. But in order for the second man to move, he had to humble himself to the number one man to let the number one man what he was about to do. He went to the king, watch this, and he had leprosy. So watch this. He was winning battle after battle. So in one battle, he had defeated the children of Israel. He grabbed them. He grabbed a young girl from the children of Israel and he made her. He made her the maid of his wife. When he made her the way the maid of his wife, she began to do work around the house. She began to get in relationship with him. And she saw this. My general is a big king, but he got leprosy. And I know something that he don't know. There is a man down in Samaria that has an anointing of healing on his life. If I could just get my boss, if I can just get my general naming down to him, he will be healed. So... He, so the mistress, which is the maid, tells, the, uh, tells Naaman's wife. Naaman's wife tells him. Naaman's, Naaman goes to his king and he says, it's a man in Israel that can heal me, but I need your help. Wow. What do you need me to do? Write out a letter to the king because kings talk to kings. Yeah. I'm in second command. I can't talk to the king. So if you don't sign off on this, I can't even get to Elisha. Yeah, yeah. The king writes the letter. 
sends him down there with 750 pounds of gold, 500 pounds of silver, camels, everything else. Why is that? Because you never come into the presence of a king without bearing a gift. Yes, sir. Are you with me? And the anointing is on the man that is going to the king. He can destroy the king if he wanted to because he don't lose. Naaman don't lose. Naaman got the ability to destroy his own king also. He's headed down to the king of Israel. And he gives the letter, the same letter that the king just wrote to the other king. And the king from Israel looks at it and say, he's trying to pick a fight with me. He know I ain't got no healing powers. What's going on with him? He's terrified because this same army had just defeated him years before. He thought they was coming back to pick a fight with him to take everything they had again. So he was terrified. But somebody was there listening and they ran down to Elisha. And they told Elisha what was going on. Elisha sends his messenger back up to the king and say, don't panic. Yeah. Send the man down here to me because yeah. I am the one to make sure that everybody, everybody around here know that there is a God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob that is around in the atmosphere. We may be in captivity, but God is on us. Yeah. We may be down and out. But God is on us. All you need to do is send that man to us. And I'm going to show you that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob still heals people with leprosy today. Yeah. He immediately named him, gets his whole caravan of people because he's an astute man. Yeah. He has leprosy and he goes down to the house of Elisha and he goes and knocks on the door. And the Bible says that Elisha looks at Gehazi and says, go tell the man to go into the Jordan River, yep. dip seven times, yep. and he will come up hill. Naaman needed some help. Yeah. Yeah. But Naaman had a problem with yeah, how God wanted to help him. Yes, sir. Yeah. Naaman gets angry. Uh -huh. Say, man, who he think he is? Mm -hmm. At least I'm naming. At least he can come out here. He can look at me. He can wave his hand over me. He can look at my spots and he can, he can say, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, come heal him right now. He was so caught up in him my God. that he did not want to choose how God wanted to heal him. That's so good. He so good. didn't even know, ladies and gentlemen, that he was in a test. Are you really, really concerned about your healing or are you concerned about your pride? Are you really, really concerned about your healing or are you concerned about what people think? Are you really, really concerned about your healing or are you concerned about how you look in the eyes of the people? He said, I can't deal with this. At least he should tell me to go to the rivers in Damascus. They are cleaner than these rivers in Israel. The Lord is saying, I want to help you. But you might not like the way I choose to help you. Yeah. Thankfully, Naaman swallowed his pride. Yeah. Went and dipped seven times. And when he came up, he came up clean. God is saying, I'm trying to give you some help. Jesus. But you play a serious part. And you have to either accept my help or you will either reject my help. But the choice is yours if you reject my help. It will remove you out of right standing with me. If you reject my help, it will remove the favor that I put on you. It will remove it off you. If you, if you reject my help, I am here to let you know right now that if you reject my help, the protection that I had over you, you will take off and get, under, get away from the covering that I got over you. Why? Because it's all about you rejecting what I want to do because you're so caught up in what you want to do. The Bible says in Hosea 4 and 6 that my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. That's not the problem. The problem is you are destroyed for a lack of knowledge because you rejected me. My God, God is saying, I want to help you, but you are hurting me because you are rejecting me. God is saying, I'm ready to accelerate you, but you are hurting me because you are rejecting me. I want to help you. Jesus. But how I choose to help you, you may have a problem with it. While we're in the place of separation, oh while we're in the place of confusion, while the whole 
whole TFCC family is wondering. God is still saying, I want to help you. But you have to do this. You got to allow me to help you. Because the Bible says in Numbers, the 13th chapter, that God was getting ready to fulfill the prophecy that he had spoke to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. He had told them all, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, he told them all, I'm giving you a land yeah. that is flowing with milk and honey. I heard Bishop Wine say this. He says, milk is what you need, but honey is what you want. In other words, I'm not just about to give you a land. I'm not about to give you what you need, but I'm also about to give you what you want. I know a lot of you need love, but you want materialistic aspects. God says, I'm going to give you what you need, and I'm going to give you what you want also. Just because you are under my protection, just because you are under my grace, if you allow me to help you the way I want to help you, I'm going to give you what you need. I'm going to give you what you want. This is why I'm telling you that season of frustration is coming to an end. This is why I'm telling you that season of separation is coming to an end. But it, it is contingent upon. Will you allow God to help you the way he wants to help you? The Bible says that the mouth of God spoke to Moses. Moses, go get 12 leaders, one from each tribe. Watch this. In the message Bible, it says it like this. Make sure that they are tried and true. Oh, wow. so In other words, don't send nobody to scout out the land that's in immaturity. My don't send nobody to scout out the land that's in insecurity. Don't send nobody to scout out the land that don't have your heart. Don't send nobody to scout out the land that don't know that there is a word over this house and we are going somewhere. Send somebody to scout out the land that's been walking with you. Because I do not want in no type of way, no discrepancies of when I show you the land of milk and honey, there will not be no doubts. There will not be no worries. There will not be no scares. There will not be nothing. Send the ones who are tried and true. They know what you like. They know how you like it. They know how it tastes. They know which way we going. They know excellence. They know non-excellence. Send the ones. Send the ones that you put your hand on. That you got your spirit on. Send them because they know what you see. They know where you're going. They know what it's about. They know what's about to take place. Here it comes. They also got stuck in where you are going. In other words, they know it ain't all about you. They know it's about them too. So send them into a place where they can connect with. And I know you're going to connect with it. I know I'm going to connect with it. But let's send them and see if they connect with it. And the Bible said that the men went into the land and they began to scout out the land. God sent them in the land for 40 days and for 40 nights. Do y'all remember the symbolic mention of the number 40? The time of testing. God sent the tried and the true into the place to test out. Let me see if everything you've been learning, let me see if everything you've been believing, let me see if everything that you are connected to, let me see what you do in these 40 days. He sends them into the land and they begin to see. Oh, it's kind of like this. You're in rural Alabama. But the land is Houston. Mm -hmm. And in other words, in Alabama, we ain't got oil fields. We got cotton fields. And in Alabama, we don't have all the minerals and all the gold. We don't have all the corporate Fortune 500 company that's coming here to know without a shadow of a doubt they're about to produce something bigger here. The land is actually conducive for overflow here. It's not conducive for overflow there. But we was there and God said, come to Houston and scout it out. 
Make sure that you know that there is an open heaven in this spot. Don't forget, I'm going to give you what you need. And I'm also going to give you what you want. So I need you to go into the land so you can connect with the land. The Bible said for 40 days, they're looking around, scouting out the land, seeing what it is. Watch this. They're blending in with the people there. And the people don't even recognize that these are strangers in the land. I'm going somewhere. In other words, God had already elevated them. They just couldn't see that God had elevated them. They came from rural Alabama, but they looked like they was Houstonians. Why? Because when God puts favor on you, when God puts his presence on you, when God puts his anointing on you, you will look like money. You will look rich. You will look like you're whole. You will look like what you are, where you are going to. God. He let them blend in. They didn't look like hillbillies. They didn't look like country boys. They looked like they was millionaires in the place where God was sending them. Hallelujah. In other words, what I'm trying to tell you is, since this season of frustration is coming to an end, you ought to be looking like it's coming to an end. You ought to be looking like where you're going to. You ought to be looking like what you're about to get ready for. You ought to be looking like where you are, not where you are, but what you are going to. Some of you need to go to the mall right now and buy you a new outfit because you are going into the promised land. Scout out the land. Do it, Lord. Yeah. Miss Babette, you're making me nervous. <laughs> they scout out the land. And they see that this is different. In other words, they see this is going to be uncomfortable. This ain't going to be nothing that we're used to. This is going to be something different. And you know what? Some of them already knew we're going to have to fight for this. Because they recognized that the people were strong. And they knew all the stuff them people had went through to build this city up. They ain't just going to give it up just to be yes, giving it up. Sir. They knew without a shadow of a doubt they was going to have to fight for it. But the difference was this. They had God with them. Yes. But the Bible said, uh-uh, my God, my God, I need to. The Bible says, when they came back, Moses said, let's get a few of us. And let's hit a report. One stuff begins to talk. Out of 12, 10 begins to. 10 is, 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 is 10 people. Then it's two other people. And the difference between the 10 and the two. The 10 grabs a hold to a spirit of fear. But the two has a spirit of faith. But watch this. Moses said this. I want to hear from the 10 before I hear from the two. Moses asked the question, what is it looking like? They say, everything God said, it looked just like that. Man, there is gold over there. There is honey over there. There are wells over there that we did not dig. There are vineyards over there where we did not plant. My God, it, in other words, it is bigger than who we are and it is bigger than where we are. He said, it's just like that. But it's a problem. They say, what's the problem? They say, the children of Anak are over there. And they are the representation of giants. The Amalekites, The Hittites. The Jebusites. All of the, the Canaanites. All of those ites are representations of your struggles that you got to destroy before God gives you the land. The spirit of rebellion is over there. The spirit of pride is over there. The spirit of laziness over there. The spirit of fear is over there. The spirit, every spirit is over there. And they are living like that. And something rose up in the two men of faith. And you know what they started saying on the inside of them? Because this is what I started saying by way of revelation knowledge. Rebellion ain't got no business over there anyway. Pride ain't got no business over there anyway. Ignorance ain't got no business over there anyway. 
Lack ain't got no business over there anyway. Religion ain't got no business over there anyway. Ain't got no business over there. How in the world what God has blessed, Satan is going to occupy anything that God has blessed. The devil is a lie. So they begin to tell them, all of these giants are over there. And he said, you know what? They say that not only are they over there, but they strong too. Man, them, them walls are fortified. In other words, the walls was a representation of the protection. So when they came into cities in them times, depending on how strong, how high the walls were, that let the people who was trying to attack know this is just how much money and how strong these people are. Because some cities didn't have but 10 foot walls, other cities had 20 foot walls, some cities had 50 and 100 foot walls. They were so big, they knew if, if, if we can't, the only way we're going to have to get in here, that God going to have to be on us. Yeah, 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 yeah. God is going to have to help us in such of a way that if God don't do it, it will not get done. My God! They say the walls are there. They say the children of Enoch are there. And Caleb got, it. Caleb got mad because the spirit of faith was on him. And he began to see you magnifying the problem more than you magnifying the God that's in you. You magnifying the people. More than the sons and daughters of God of who we are. You are magnifying that. Shut up. Jesus. Bible said, Caleb said, steal the people. Shut up. Jesus. God don't need to hear fear. God don't need to hear doubt. Jesus. God don't need to hear worry. God don't need to hear reasoning. Yeah. God don't need to hear it. Shut up. Yeah. 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 When he made them be quiet, this made their fear gets stronger. And you know what they said? 10 and 2. The only way that we're going to get out of this, we got to go infect the whole camp Jesus. and tell the camp what we can't do, even though God said what we can do. Yeah. They ran in fear, and the text said, the whole congregation yes. was wailing yeah, yeah, yeah. because God wanted to help them, but they had to come out of their comfort zone. God wanted to help them, but they had to come out of their convenience. God had to help them, but they had to come out of familiarity. And they cried to stay in. What God was trying to deliver them out of. God wanted to help them. But how God was choosing to help them, they didn't want the help. Jesus. They said, Jesus. I would rather Jesus. choose us a leader. We coming, they already in Louisiana. They've left Alabama. And they coming on into Texas. But they said, we would might as well choose a leader to take us back into the bondage Jesus. that God had delivered us up out of. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the biggest problems that believers have when they make mistakes or when they fall into a crisis, the biggest problem is they fall into panic. They allow the spirit of fear to get on top of them and it causes them to panic. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians, I mean 2 Timothy 1 and 17, that he hasn't given you a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and of a sound mind. But if you don't know who God is about to use in order to help you out of your situation, you will panic. If you don't know what God is about to do, you will panic. If you are not confident to stand on the word that God is giving, you will panic. They panicked. When they panicked, it caused them to start venting to people who didn't have wisdom. They started venting to people who didn't have strategy. They started venting to people who did not know how God was about to 
to do what he was about to do. And they started forming cliques. To choose a leader to go back into what God has delivered you up out of. Some of you have come too far to try to choose a leader to go back into that rebellion. Some of you have come too far to try to choose a leader to take you back into poverty. Some of you have come too far to try to choose a leader to take you back into that bad attitude. Some of you have come too far to try to choose a leader to take you back into that immaturity, to take you back in those insecure thoughts, to take you back. Can I tell you what else? They made the mistake in. Ladies and gentlemen, when the pressure was coming, they let negative thinking linger. The most dangerous thing that you can do while you're going to a land, while you're about to overcome, while you're about to recover all, the most dangerous thing you can do is let negative thinking linger. When you let it linger, you become what you are believing. You become what you are speaking. You become whatever it is that you are thinking. The most dangerous thing you can do for we wrestle after the flesh. But we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. Through the pulling down of strongholds, casting vain imaginations, and everything that exalts itself above the name of God, we've got to kill it. Yes. If you don't kill it, you will fight to choose a leader to go back into what God is trying to deliver you out of. Can I tell you another mistake they make? See, now you're in the test now. You're in the middle of between. You are in the between time. Milo, you said we in the middle. The separation that's happening in the middle is going to pull the character out of you. It's going to pull the truth out of you. It's going to pull what you really believe out of you while you're in the the middle. middle in the middle and God needs to let you know something while you're in the middle make sure you start thinking about what I did in victory yeah. don't you don't you feel your mind on how it's going to be how hard it's going to be to bring these walls down you got to remember that if I did it before I'll do it again yeah. I will do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you may ask, think, or even imagine. Some of you, if you ain't got a testimony, you better go get you a testimony. The reason why you gonna quit is because you ain't got a testimony. The reason why you won't keep pressing is because you've forgotten what God did. If he saved you, he did something in you. If he saved you, he got you out of something. It ain't nobody under the sound of my voice that can say that you are saved if you can't remember what he delivered you from. If you can't remember what he got you out of. If you can't remember how his hand was on you. If you can't remember how he protected you. They made some crucial mistakes because they did not have the strategy or they did not know how God was about to get them out. Watch this. Here it comes, y'all. We come into a close. The Lord realized that they wanted to choose a leader to go back into what he had delivered them out of. So you know what the Lord said right then? He said this. They don't want my help because they do not agree with how I'm choosing to help them. So since they're not in agreement, they're in disagreement. And nobody can go into my promised land in disagreement. Nobody can go into my place of promotion when you're in disagreement. Nobody can go into my place of milk and honey when you are not accepting and you're not in agreement with what I got going on and how I'm about to bless you. So you know what? I want, to have, I want to help you, but since you got a problem with how I'm going to help you, then you know what? This, this, this is what happened in the Old Covenant. They died. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
God said, out of two million, two people was the only ones that saw the promised land. You ain't got to believe the Bible truth. I do because I know I'm one of the two. I've seen the two. I've seen what he will do when you are one of the two. I've seen the doors he'll open when you are one of the two. I've seen the stuff he'll do when you are one of the two. You can't tell me. I know he'll bring you out if you one of the two. I know he will heal you if you are one of the two. I know he will set you up and he will make your enemies become your footstool if you are one of the two. They died. They died. They died in disbelief. All the enemy is trying to get you to do is get deep in disbelief because that's the place that you will die. You will die in the place of disbelief because disbelief is unbelief. All God is asking you to play your part is to trust that what he said is going to come to pass. Will you agree with what you feel or will you agree with who he is? And the Bible said, Joshua, my servant Moses is dead. Yes. You are going across that well, you are going across that Jordan, and you are going to overtake all of the land. Can 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 I, can I help y'all? If you're in bondage, this is how God chooses to deliver you. If you're in sickness, this is how God chooses to heal you. If you're in disunity, this is how God chooses to unify you. If you are in brokenness, this is how God chooses to make you whole. If you are in lack, this is how God is going to make you get to the place of more than enough. If you are in defeat, this is what God is going to do to make sure you get to the place of victory. You get to the place that God is calling you to by the Spirit. I'm coming. You want healing? It's by the Holy Spirit of healing. You want deliverance? It's by the Holy Spirit of deliverance. You want breakthrough? It's about the Holy Spirit of breakthrough. You cannot say you want something, but you are not in relationship with the Spirit. You cannot be in relationship with the Father. You cannot be in relationship with the Son without first being in relationship with the Holy Spirit. Why? Because He's the God extended. And I'm coming to a close. And the Bible says that in Joshua, the sixth chapter, that he told the children of Israel, march around the walls of Jericho for six days. March around them for six days. And on the seventh day, I want you to march around seven times. And at the seventh time, I want you to give out a shout. And on the seventh time, I want you to get the ram horn. And I want you to blow it. And when you blow it, you're going to make a sound. And when you make a sound, the Holy Ghost is coming. Ladies and gentlemen, when they raised up their voice, they ignited the spirit of breakthrough and the walls came tumbling down. So you know what? Whatever you are asking from God, God wants to help you. But how he chooses to help you by his spirit, you should get to the place of maturity where you say, Father, I don't understand, but yes. I do not agree, but yes. I do not know how you're going to make it happen, but yes. I do not understand, but yes. Spirit of the living God, we celebrate you we honor you. We appreciate you. 
We say yes. Forgive us for every sin. Forgive us for every disagreement. Forgive us for rebellion. Forgive us for getting so caught up in fear. Forgive us. Created us a clean heart. Renewing us a right spirit. Holy Spirit of unity. Come. Holy Spirit of restoration. Come. Holy Spirit of reconciliation. Come. Holy Spirit of love. Come. We know that how you choose to help us, you're going to help us by the Holy Spirit. So if we need peace, we need the spirit of peace. If we need love, we need the spirit of love. If we need forgiveness, we need the spirit of forgiveness. Holy Spirit, come. If we need prosperity, we need the spirit of prosperity. We submit and we give you the right to rest, to rule, and to reign in hearts. In Jesus' name, let all the saints of God say amen. amen. To everybody that is under the sound of my voice, you want to be saved. You want the spirit of God to come in you to declare you a son of God. Open up your mouth to declare you a daughter of God right now. You need the Holy Spirit to change your life because you're going to get to heaven by the spirit. It is the Holy Spirit that does the work. He regenerates you. He makes you a new creation. It's the Holy Spirit that changes your desires. Yes. It's the Holy Spirit that changes your appetites. Yes. It's the Holy Spirit that puts you on the rhythm of where God is going, what God is doing. You need the Spirit. Yes. I need the Spirit. We need the Spirit of God. Yes. You will not be saved without the Spirit of God. Yes. Open up your mouth and repeat this behind me. Say, Father, in Jesus' name. I surrender, I surrender and I submit, and I submit to, the Spirit, to the Holy Spirit, to Jesus, to Jesus and, to the Father. and to the Father. I accept, I accept Jesus, Christ Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and, my personal and as my personal Savior. Personal Savior. Come, into my Come into my heart. Make me a new creation, a new creation. And, adopt and adopt me into the family of God. Family of God. In, Jesus name. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. If you said that and you believe everything that you said, the Bible says with the mouth you make confession, oh but in the heart you make the belief. Yeah. So the speaker and the believer got to come to a position of agreement yeah. for you and I to be saved. Yeah. So you just cannot say it out of your mouth and not be convicted in your heart. Yeah. When you get convicted in your heart, that's when God does the work. Yes. Conviction happens in the middle of the message. Yeah. Conviction takes place at the first of the message. There is a word that will make you say, I am better than this. There is a word that will make you say, I'm not staying in this. There is a word that will make you say that I don't have to be like this. God can change me. To the person that's saying, I'm in a backslidden state. I'm saved. But I feel separated. All you got to do is throw out your arms and surrender. And just like this, is the representation of the Father waiting on you to come back home. He said in Jeremiah 3, I'll heal you from your backsliding. If you want to be healed, throw out your arms and say, Father, in Jesus' name, I surrender and I recommit my life into your hands. I renounce the spirit of backsliding. And I ask you, Holy Spirit, to renew my identity and drive, and drive out insecurities. insecurities. Holy, Spirit, Holy Spirit, come, come and, I'm and I'm back. In Jesus' name, In Jesus name. Amen. amen. Holy Spirit of love, begin to shower with that person right now. In Jesus' name, I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost so strong right now. It may be some people online that's saying, I got to be a part of this family. We not going to be scattered for long. I got to be a part of this family. We're not going to be separated for long. I got to be in this family. We're not going to be in this place of confusion for long. God is doing a work. Yes, he, is. he is preparing us 
to not just catch the fish, but clean the fish, train the fish, and deploy the fish. God is doing a work. And if you want to be a part of TLCC, all you got to do is send us a message by way of Facebook. You can send us a message by way of YouTube. You can send me a message by way of TikTok. You can send a message by way of Instagram. Let us know so we can send out the new members packet to you. And we can get somebody to get to you in the next 48 hours. To everybody that's under the sound of my voice, let's worship the Lord in our giving. This is the opportune time that we get to show God exactly where our heart is with God. He says, if you give, it shall be given unto you. The question is not if we'll give, if the Spirit of God is in us. The question becomes, how much are we willing to give? Because we are givers by nature. Are you with me? Ladies and gentlemen, you got to question yourself. You got to ask yourself the question. If I struggle with giving, it's the most important attribute of God is it in me. Because the Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. For the person that's struggling with giving, you are actually struggling with the number one attribute God is trying to put in you. What God does is he touches your heart and he makes you want to give up yourself. He makes you want to sacrifice as a sign. That's my spirit. To everybody that's under the sound of my voice, if I've sown, the Bible says if I've sown spiritual things, you should be happy to sow material things. Because the principle is this, you feed what's feeding you. You give to what's given to you. You build what's building you. TLCC to the family. All the Lord is asking just a tenth, a dime of every dollar, just to show the Lord that this is who you are, not what you do. To everybody that's under the sound of my voice, it's time, ladies and gentlemen, let's worship the Lord in our giving. Let's worship the Lord in our giving. Let's worship the Lord in our giving. Go ahead. It's absolutely an honor to be able to give. I always say this, there was a time where I wanted to give and had nothing to give. And so in this season, because God has blessed us abundantly, it's an honor that I get the opportunity to give God the first tenth of my income because he has done so much for me. So this is our time right now. Like Pastor James said, it's something that we always say at Transforming Faith. We never come before a king, meaning Jesus Christ, without bearing a gift. So now within your heart, whatever the Lord is telling you you to give, now is the time. Those that are in the cyber sanctuary, as we stand to our feet, we will repeat behind Pastor James, and we need to make sure that when we say this words, this is just not something that we're doing through repetition. This is something that we're doing because we truly believe. Hallelujah. To everybody that's under the sound of my voice, raise your phones up, raise your offerings, raise your tithes, and repeat behind me, say, as we give our tithes. As we give our tithes. As we sow our seeds. As we sow our seeds. As we give our offerings. As we give our offerings. We are actively believing God for. We are actively believing God for. Jobs. Jobs. Better jobs. Better jobs. Raises. Raises. Bonuses. Bonuses. And benefits. And benefits. An increase in sales. An increase in sales. An increase in commissions. An increase in commissions. Settlements being favored. Settlements being favored. On our behalf. On our behalf. Estates and inheritances. Estates and inheritances. Being released. Being released. Unexpected income. Unexpected income. Being released. Being released. Rebates and returns. Rebates and returns. Checks in the mail. Checks in the mail. Gifts and surprises. Gifts and surprises. Finding money. Finding money. Debts paid off. Debts paid off. Expenses are decreasing. Expenses are decreasing. Blessings and increase. Blessings and increase. Are flowing in us. Are flowing in us. Flowing through us. Flowing through us. And flowing all around and flowing us. Flowing all around us. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. For meeting all my financial for needs. All my financial needs. And I needs. thank you, Lord. And I thank you, Lord. That I have more than enough. That I have more than enough. To give into the kingdom of God. To give into the kingdom of God. And to promote the gospel. And to promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. Of Jesus Christ. I am a giver. I am a giver. I am a seed sower. I am a seed sower. And, and you said. You said. You give seed. You give seed. To the soul. To the soul. Now fill me. Now fill me. With more seed. With more seed. To sow. To sow. Father, in Jesus' name, your credit is good with us. <laughs> yes, God. Bless us. Yes. Bless the tithe. Bless the offering. Yeah. Bless the seed. Yeah. Breathe acceleration. Yeah. Breathe favor. Yeah. Breathe abundance. In Jesus' name we pray. Jesus. Amen. 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 Pastor James, at the end of your sermon, you were saying, but yes. This season has been uncomfortable, but yes. This season has been hard, but yes. This season has been confusing, but yes. Hallelujah. I have kept a but yes in my heart. You have kept a but yes in your heart. It's an honor. Thank you, Jesus. To have a pastor that just doesn't preach it. He lives it. 
Amen. And I'm Glory the type of woman that would not honor my husband publicly if he lived a lifestyle step separately with me privately. So with that being said, you have stayed steady through all of this. And TFCC is coming to an end. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's coming to an end. With that being said, we are inviting everyone. Everybody. Everybody hit the share button right now. To join us next Sunday, November the 6th at the Power Center at 1030 a.m. We are going to have a Holy Ghost field celebration <laughs> of seven years. We will celebrate next week. We have so many things in store for that Sunday. Some huge announcements. You will be able to see exactly where God is leading us to. Didn't happen how we thought it would. But yes. yes, and we are finally Hallelujah. at that place. So I invite everybody that is next Sunday, 1030 a.m. Praise and worship the Please word from our pastor. It is going to be a phenomenal day. I miss the fellowship. So we will see everyone there. Lots of exciting things happening. Um, that's the announcement for next Sunday. We'll have more things to share. Absolutely. I do want to share. I'm not going to make her come forward. Crystal, my right hand girl. She is celebrating her birthday tomorrow on October the 31st. I'm just looking at her Hallelujah. out of the side of my eye and I wanted to say it publicly because while I've been holding on to it, but yes, I've had a friend that has been keeping me propped up that has rescheduled her whole life to be present with me when we record and when we do things. So Crystal Shine, I honor you. you. I love you. In Jesus name. I appreciate you and happy, happy birthday. <laughs> In Jesus name. We bless you, Crystal. Yeah. With the same anointing that's on this house, we speak it over your life right yes. now. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Acceleration, breakthrough, freedom, favor. TFCC. And he, and he got you on camera. TFCC. Well, y'all don't know she canceled her hair appointment to be here. So. TFCC. <laughs> TFCC. The Holy Spirit. Got a world to save through you. Yeah. Yeah. Like the question That's is good. this. That's good. Will you say yes? That's good. Yeah. Say that one more time. The, the Holy Spirit, Spirit has, has a world to save yeah. through you. Yeah. When you signed up for Jesus, you signed up for the purpose. Yes. Yeah. First John 3 and 8. Yes. Yeah. To destroy the, the works, works of the, the devil. devil. Yeah. Do you know what the works of the devil are? Yeah. Sin, yeah. sickness, sickness, poverty, yeah. death, mm -hmm. loss, destruction, guilt, condemnation, fear, and shame. You signed up to allow the Holy Spirit to work through you to destroy and save, to destroy a crazy world of sin yes. and to save the ones of this fold that you know not of. That's good. That's good. This Bible I'm talking. I said that to say, you think you are just listening to a sermon, but you are being empowered to be deployed. Wow. That's good. God is going to hold you accountable the same way he's holding me accountable. Yeah. If you are not being deployed to do your job and save a dying world through the spirit of God, yeah. God is going to help you, but you got to be okay with who he chooses and the spirit of God to come on you to help you. I'm done preaching. That's good. See you next week. To everybody that's under the sound of my voice, repeat behind me. Say, I am a faith giant. I am a faith giant. I walk by faith. I walk by faith. I talk by faith. I talk by faith. I move by faith. I move by faith. I decide by faith. I decide by faith. And I live by faith. And I live by faith. I will have a great week. I will have a great week. Because of my faith. Because of my faith. I have great favor. I have great favor. Because of my faith. Because of my faith. I will execute. I will execute. By God giving mission. By God giving mission. Because of my faith. Because of my faith. We'll see you all Sunday. Yeah. This Sunday. Yeah. We can continue building our faith.